Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bible study. I'm R.K. Brown, and I'm so glad to be with you. Even though I've only been out one week, I feel like I've been out forever because the last couple of lessons I did, I, I pre-recorded them like on a Thursday or Friday or whenever it was, and it's just not the same. You know, I'm not a person that needs an audience, but doing this when you know that nobody's listening is kind of like talking, having a conversation in a mirror. If you're, you know, preparing a conversation for somebody and you kind of practice it in the mirror, it's kind of like that. It's not real. But when I know that people are actually listening, you know, like in real time, when I know I'm actually talking to living, breathing human beings in real time, it somehow makes it a little better. So tonight, I've got a lesson for you called Nothing But The Truth. It's a very interesting story, and I'm going to point out a really crazy verse. It's just, it's just amazing how people are with the truth of the gospel, with the truth of the Bible, with the truth. You know, in this case, it was in the Old Testament, so it was still the truth of the word of the prophet. But the word of this prophet was equal to the Bible. So let's get into the story before I just trip all over myself. All right? We're talking about King Jehoshaphat and King Ahab today. In 2 Chronicles 18, starting at verse 1, Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. So if you read the scripture, like the chapter before this one, if you read 2 Chronicles chapter 17, you will see that God just absolutely blessed Jehoshaphat because Jehoshaphat really was a righteous king. He he got rid of all the, the you know, the groves and all the idols and all that stuff out of Jerusalem and or out of Judah and he got rid of the sodomites that he, you know he finished the job that his father had started getting all the sodomites out of Jerusalem and all that kind of stuff so he was a really good king but he joined himself with Ahab who was an absolutely wicked king who was the husband of Jezebel and God became really angry at him, but I'll talk about that toward the end of the lesson. But Jehoshaphat was really a very blessed man, and he joined affinity with just one of the most wicked kings in the Bible, Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So Jehoshaphat's not going to just jump off into something. At least he's, he's got a little bit of sense about him, although he's not exercising very good sense, and you'll see what I mean here in a few minutes. But <clears throat> he's going to inquire of the prophets, at least. He's going to... Check out the word of the Lord to gather some wisdom. Verse 5. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. For God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of him? So I would guess that for some reason Jehoshaphat just has a sneaking feeling that these are the prophets of Ahab and not the prophets of the Lord. And you'll see what I mean in a, in a minute when you see the term his prophets as opposed to the prophets of the Lord. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of? Now, it's interesting. He said a prophet of the Lord besides. So Jehoshaphat is assuming that these are prophets of God. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, 
There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he never prophesieth good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Emla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Emla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. I can just imagine that that was just some kind of pomp and circumstance that they're sitting there in their robes, each man on his seat in the gate as the false prophets prophesy unto them. Good, and saying, Go to war, for the Lord will deliver Ramoth Gilead into your hands. And Zedekiah, the son of Canaanah, had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. I'm going to stop and just light here for a second on that. Because what the Bible says, that will I speak, I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what some false preacher says. Whatever the word of the Lord says, that will I speak. When the Bible says that the sodomites, for instance, are reprobates, that they can't be saved because they've been given over to a reprobate mind, they've been given up to uncleanness, they've been given up to lewdness, they've been given over to a reprobate mind, I'm going to declare it no matter what. And that's just an example of what I'm talking about. When the Bible says that the children of Israel sacrificed their children in the fire, they caused their children to pass through the fire, they killed their babies just like we're killing our babies in the abortion mills. The Bible tells us that that is wrong, and I am going to stand against it no matter what it costs me. No matter what it costs me. I'm going to speak whatever my Lord says, and that's in the Bible. The Lord is not speaking in my ear anymore, at least not in my physical ear, like he did with the prophets. He's speaking to me and you through the Bible if you'll read it and hear it. If you'll believe it, then he'll speak to you through the Bible. If you're born again, if you got your trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then the Lord will speak to you through the Bible because you've been given the Holy Spirit. You've been sealed with that Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. And if that's the case, then the Lord will speak to you through the Scriptures. And you have not the need that any man teach you. Even the Scripture says, although teachers can certainly accelerate the learning process, the Lord will talk to you through Scripture. So whatever the Lord says, that will I speak, says Micaiah. Let me see if I can find my place here. Yeah, here we go. All right, we're at verse 14. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. Now, if, you're, if you hadn't been really paying attention to me, pay attention now, because remember, Micaiah just, you know, just said, y'all go on up there. The Lord's going to let you prosper in this battle. But check this out. Verse 15. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure, adjure thee 
that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord. So this is a real interesting situation because Ahab, you know, when the prophet said, go up, the Lord, when the prophet said the same thing as the other prophets, Ahab didn't believe him. And so he says, how long must I adjure thee to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Whatever the Lord gives you, tell me that. Nothing but the truth. But when he gives him the truth, you'll see what happens here in a minute. But that reminds me of something. I taught a, a lesson a few weeks ago called, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. My lesson was called, because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Jesus said that to the Jews in John chapter 8, because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. And this is an Old Testament example here of Micaiah, the prophet of God, the real true prophet of God, not the prophet of Ahab, was telling Ahab and Jehoshaphat the truth. And Ahab even demanded the truth of him. How long must I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And so when he does, look at what happens. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. So this is the vision that Micaiah is seeing, and the Lord is saying this, and it reminded me of something with Jesus, where he came out of a ship in Mark chapter 6, 34, and Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. So it was the same situation in the days of Ahab that the children, especially the people in northern Israel, didn't have a sheep. Because remember, there were two kingdoms. There was the kingdom of Judah, which belonged to the lineage of David. And the other ten tribes, you know, the Judah consisted of Benjamin and the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin the tribe of Judah. And they were ruled by the descendants of David. And the other kingdom was called Israel. And the, its kingdom at this point was in Samaria, and it was ruled by wicked kings all the way through. There never really was a righteous king in uh, northern Israel except Jehu to some degree, the one that put Jezebel to death, was really the only righteous king. And because he was righteous, the Lord kept his descendants on the throne for four generations, him and three generations after him. But other than that, nothing but wicked kings. And their, you know, their households kept being put to death and new kings would step up and maybe one or two descendants would rule the throne and then they would be overthrown and so on and so on. So anyway, back to the story. They're as sheep having no shepherd. Verse 17, And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? Again, he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. So this is Micaiah's vision again. He sees all the host of heaven standing to the right and left of God. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying, After this manner, and another saying, After this manner. And there came out a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, who do you think that that was? Jesus said that the devil was a liar and the father of it. There's no truth in him. So that tells you right there that the 
devil and his angels were not cast out of heaven at that point. That's a whole different lesson, but I just wanted to point that out, that at that point, because it couldn't be any other than the devil, because a righteous angel would not be lying. So it was the devil. I, I would, I'd bet money on it. When we get to heaven, we'll find out, but I'd bet money that that was Satan. So that just shows that there was no prehistoric angelic war where a third of the angels were cast out. That was at a later point or is at a later point. And I believe possibly when Jesus was crucified because, uh, you know, Jesus said in John twelve thirty one, now is the prince of this world cast out. So that might be the point when it happened when after Jesus raised was rose from the dead. Anyway, also you kind of see it in... In Revelation chapter 12, after Jesus, I believe, is taken up to his father. I could be wrong about that timeline, but I don't think so. Just pointing that out. Verse 22, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit. This is Micaiah talking. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, the son of Canaana, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? I'm going to stop right here again because I'm telling you. Jesus said that in the latter times that many will be offended and cause one another to be put to death. And then in Luke's gospel, or, you know, in, in Luke's version of the Olivet Discord, he said that fathers would cause children to be put to death and vice versa. People will be offended and they will turn on us. The so-called prophets of God, the so-called people of God, some that you go to church with now will turn on you in the last days. And they will be like this prophet, Canaanah, who smote Micaiah on the cheek because he told the truth. This was supposed to be a prophet of God, and he smote the man of God that was telling the truth. And I'm telling you right now, those are going to be our persecutors in the last days. So-called Christians that are not Christians, that are not really saved, when, when tribulation comes and they're offended, they are going to turn on us. Those are going to be our main persecutors. They will turn us in. They will cause us to be put to death. Just like this here. Just like this Canaan, a smote Micaiah. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on the day when thou shalt go in an inner chamber and hide thyself. So he, he told Canaan, Micaiah told Canaan, Yeah, you're going to see because you're going to be hiding yourself. You're going to see that I was telling the truth. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, all you people. He said, y'all better listen up because I'm telling you the truth. You better listen up. Jesus said to one of the churches, I was hearing it last night as I was listening to the Bible after I got out of the shower and getting ready for bed and all that kind of stuff. I was listening to the scriptures and I, and I just decided to listen to the book of Revelation in case the Lord had something for me other than this lesson. And for some reason, I just chose the book of Revelation because that's always what people are thinking about. So anyway... Jesus said that some of you will be put in prison 10 days, and I'm sure that you will be fed, or possibly that we will be fed. What bread of affliction and water of affliction, but we will have tribulation 10 days. Love not your lives unto the death, and I will give you a crown of life, says the Lord Jesus. He that endures till the end shall be saved, because those who are offended will not endure till the end. They call themselves Christians, but they will not endure till the end, and therefore they will not be saved. I don't believe that anybody that turns on their brothers and sisters is a Christian. I don't believe that they're saved. 
I mean, well, I say brothers and sisters, the ones that they call their brothers and sisters because they will turn on us at some point. All right, let's keep going. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, listen to this. Listen to how gullible Jehoshaphat is. I'm, I'm kind of stunned at this. You know, it made me think about Jesus saying, you know, be ye wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You have to be as wise as a serpent. You need to know, as Jesus said in the book of Revelation again, in that, to that same church that I was just talking about, you know the depths of Satan. And Ahab didn't know. He didn't obviously understand the depths of Satan because he made affinity with a wicked king. And look at what happens here. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle, but put thou on my robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. So Jehoshaphat is gullible enough to put on the robes of Ahab to go to the battle. So Ahab is disguising himself as not being the king, and and Jehoshaphat's disguised as Ahab. Jehoshaphat was definitely not wise as a serpent. He was definitely harmless as a dove. I mean, he he definitely meant good. He was trying to be good. He was trying to to do Ahab good because, you know, Ahab was of Israel. He was a descendant of Israel. I'm going to talk about this at the end. Lord, please remind me to talk about something at the end about ecumenicalism. All right? I've got a I've got a an overarching theme to this besides the, you know, the verse that I focused on about, you know, nothing but the truth. Verse 30. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. So they're only going after the king of Israel. They're not trying to kill the people of Israel because it's a city of Israel. It's Ramoth Gilead. I don't know. It doesn't say that he's fighting against any Philistines. He's just fighting against Ramoth Gilead, which is a city of Israel. So he might be fighting his own kinfolk, so they don't want to kill their brethren. They just want to kill the king. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, It is the king of Israel, because he's wearing Ahab's raiment, his, his you know, kingly robe. Therefore, they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, golly, cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. So I don't believe that it was Philistines because they, you know, they would have been happy to kill Jehoshaphat or whoever it was. They would have been happy to kill any descendant of Israel. So they realized that it wasn't King Ahab and they turned their attention away from King Ahab and this happens. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, just drew a bow. and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his, to his chariot man, Turn thy hand that thou mayest carry me out of the heat, or out, I'm sorry, out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even, and about the time of the sun going down, he died. And boy, that was the end of a wicked king right there. <clears throat> he, he just went straight to hell. And um, of course, the words of Micaiah came to pass, but he was, he was willing to put 
his robes on Jehoshaphat and let Jehoshaphat die in his place so that he could win the battle. That's what kind of wicked man he is. And he must have known the gullibleness of Jehoshaphat. He must have known that Jehoshaphat had a good heart. Remember this, that Jesus said, Be ye wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We, as Christians, must be wise. We can't be fools because if we are, there are wicked people out there, even in the churches. Because remember, Ahab was a descendant of Israel. He's part of the overall congregation of Israel. But he was a wicked man, and there are wicked people in the churches that would do the same to us. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I should have put that scripture up there, but I, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. But I've told you, so, and that's what Jesus said. But then this happens. Chapter 19, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to king Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Now let me talk about ecumenicalism. Because there are a lot of churches out there that call themselves churches like uh, the uh, what do you call it? the United Methodists, for instance. I would not call that a church of God. I would call that a false church. They go out and they try to do good. They try to help the poor. They try to do some good things, but they don't believe the word. They have women in the pulpit. They have homosexuals in the pulpit. They allow homosexuals to be part of their congregations instead of throwing them out, which we Baptists certainly should be doing, and the independent Baptists actually do, and just accept. They, they'll just say things like, well, doctrine is not important. We need to love one another. But you see here what the Lord says through the prophet. And Jehu, the son of Hananiah the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. If you don't love the word of God, if you don't believe the word of God, and you call yourself a Christian, you hate God. And you do with that what you will. If you don't accept the words of the Bible, you are a hater of God, and you are one of those that will turn on us. You are one of those that will betray us and cause us to be put to death when tribulation comes. I know who you are. Nevertheless, he says to Jehoshaphat, there are good things found in thee in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem and he went out again through the people of, from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. He's a good man. He believes the scriptures. He's a loving person. That's why he made affinity with Ahab, because he's a loving person, but he's, he's pointing his love, he's, he's pointing his affection, as it were, in the wrong direction. He's giving his affection to somebody who he should not give his affection to, a wicked king called Ahab, and that's how we need to be towards false brethren. We don't need to give them our affection. The Apostle Paul said, avoid such. You know, after the third, second and third admonition, avoid them. You know, they won't hear the truth, avoid them. But he said some good was found in him, right? But then Ahab goes through a lot more story and, and, and there's another king that comes to northern Israel. And then this happens. Again, after Ahab, or I'm sorry, after Jehoshaphat is rebuked. There's a lot more story about Jehoshaphat is what I was trying to say. So after Jehoshaphat is rebuked, then there's a lot more story that happens. And then this happens in Second Chronicles chapter 20 at the end of the chapter. 
Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hananiah, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. And after this, after this, did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahaziah, the king of Israel, who did very wickedly. So he turns around after a rebuke from Hanani, or from Jehu, the son of Hanani, he turns around and joins himself again with a wicked king. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships in Ezion Geber. Then Eliezer, the son of Dodeva of Meresha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works, and the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish. So because you joined yourself with a wicked king, the Lord has broken your works. Listen to me. Don't join yourself with false brethren. If they don't believe the Bible, if they don't accept the words of the Bible, don't join yourself with them because the Lord will break your works. You have been warned from me. The Lord will break your works. Your works will not prosper if you join yourself to false brethren. Do you hear me? That's the point of this lesson. Now, of course, you know, I focused on the, the verse that said, you know, I adjure you in the name of the Lord that you say nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord. And when he told the truth, then he got in trouble for it. Even though he told him to tell him the truth, he got in trouble for it. That's the way it is with false brethren. So I hope you get the gist of the lesson because that is my lesson. I hope I made my point very clear. So, if you are watching by Facebook and or YouTube, then do as the kids say and smash the like button. I'm trying to feel for this dot while I was doing that, and I'm not finding the dot. So, here we go. Okay, I found it. Join me on Gab. Also, I have a, a, a Gab TV account, and after I go on Gab TV, then I put my messages onto uh, my gap, then I, I link them over to my gab, you know, news feed. So join me on gab and also on BitChute. So on YouTube, gab and BitChute, I am called Bible study with RK Brown. And of course on Facebook, it's just RK Brown. It's not, it's not like a, uh, a band site or, you know, like musicians set up their own sites and, and it would be the same with me, like a, as a, as a, as a Bible teacher, I would just set up a, like a, something like a band site or an artist site or, or something like that and call it Bible Study with R.K. Brown. But I just started broadcasting on my regular Facebook page, and so I just kept it as R.K. Brown. And so anyway, that's my lesson. Lord willing, I'll see you next week. I'm really glad to be back in the saddle because I, I just feel like because I did it differently for, for three weeks and I was out last week, I just really missed being here. I feel like I was away for a long time, and I was so glad to be back at church this morning. I'm a member of Fatherland Baptist Church in Madison, Tennessee. Y'all ought to come visit us. Look us up. And uh, the pastor preached really good today. Just a good message. He just went through Acts chapter 12, a good bit of it, and uh, it was a really good lesson. Just talked about believing. Talked about how the saints prayed for Peter. I loved it. Blessed me a lot. Thank you, Pastor. So anyway, um, that's it. Lord willing, I'll see you next week. Until then, good night and God bless you. I'm R.K. Brown. This is Bible Study.